Here is your latest African news. Africa wide. Africa split on Russia's Human Rights Commission suspension. The UN General Assembly has voted to suspend Russia from its Human Rights Council, HRC, following allegations of war crimes by Kremlin troops in Ukraine, but African diplomats did not widely back the move. Compared to the vote on the resolution to condemn the invasion that was held in Alimach, more African countries abstained and voted against the decision this time. Out of 54 nations on the continent, 24 abstained and 9 voted against the move, including Algeria and Ethiopia, which have both had historically good relations with Moscow. Zimbabwe, Burundi, Eritrea, Congo, Mali and the Central African Republic voted against two. Another 11 had no votes recorded, Rwanda, Zambia and Somalia included. Only 10 African countries backed the suspension of Russia from the 47-member HRC. These were Chad, Comoros, the Democratic Republic of Congo, Ivory Coast, Libya, Malawi and Seychelles. Guinea Guinea gives stern warning to foreign mining firms over inequality. The head of Guinea's ruling military government, Colonel Mamadi Dumboya, has told foreign mining companies to build processing factories locally and to share revenues with the country equally. Dumboya has given the companies until the end of May to submit proposals and a timetable for the construction of bauxite refineries, according to a video posted on the presidency's Facebook page. With an estimated 7.4 billion tons, Guinea has the world's largest reserves of bauxite, a mineral used in the manufacture of aluminium essential for the automobile and food industries. It is also the second largest producer. China imports about half of its bauxite needs from Guinea. However, the benefits of the mining of bauxite or other abundant natural resources such as iron, gold and diamond remain notoriously uneven. Experts cite insufficient investment in the development of the local economy, a lack of the essential infrastructures such as roads, endemic corruption and loopholes in existing laws. South Africa South Africa appeals to the UN against bias and partisanship. South Africa's International Relations Minister, Naledi Pandor, has berated the United Nations, stating that its member states must not be allowed to deploy it in a partisan manner when briefing the media on South Africa's position on the Russia-Ukraine conflict. The minister added that suspending Russia from the UN Human Rights Council would make it harder to hold the country accountable. Pandor said that the body must stand for human rights equally in all countries, including Palestine, where scores of children have been killed in its conflict with Israel. South Africa again abstained from a crucial United Nations vote to suspend Russia from the UN Human Rights Council. It is the third time it abstained from UN votes on the ongoing conflict. The country has come under criticism for its non-aligned position in the ongoing conflict between Russia and Ukraine. But Minister Pandor said that the UN should be consistent and stand for human rights for all, not only in this situation. She said that suspending Russia could lead to even more conflict. Rwanda Rwanda becomes the first African country to launch a center dedicated to artificial intelligence. Rwanda has become the first African country to launch a center dedicated to artificial intelligence. Rwanda has launched its C4IR saying it will work with stakeholders around the world to design and pilot new approaches to technology governance that foster innovation in an inclusive and responsible manner. According to Rwandan Minister of Information, the advent of the fourth industrial revolution and the rapid innovations witnessed during the COVID-19 pandemic has increased urgency to develop digital and technological capacities to build more resilient systems for a healthier society and more sustainable economy. Some of the projects that the C4IR is already working on are the country's artificial intelligence AI policy and laws on the protection of personal data and privacy. 
At the launch of the center last week, President Paul Kagame said the facility was the country's pride. He added that it was evidence of how far it has advanced in the fields of science and technology. Western Sahara Western Sahara's Polisario Front suspends contact with Spain. The Polisario Front independence movement has accused Spain of making a grave error after it changed its position and backed Morocco's autonomy plan for the disputed Western Sahara. Morocco sees the Western Sahara as a former Spanish colony with rich phosphate resources and access to lucrative Atlantic fishing waters as an integral part of its territory. The Algeria-backed Polisario separatists took up arms in 1970s and have continued to demand an independence referendum on the basis of a 1991 deal that included a ceasefire. Spanish Foreign Minister José Manuel Álvarez said Morocco's 2007 proposal to offer Western Sahara autonomy was the most serious, realistic and credible basis to end the decades-long dispute over the vast territory. This sparked an angry response from the Polisario, which expressed surprise over the move. Congo Country holds a showcase of culture in Fast Brazza Fashion Week. The first edition of Brazza Fashion Week, BFW, took place in Brazzaville, the Republic of Congo's capital. Held for three days, the week showcased talents from the Central African nation, the Democratic Republic of Congo, DRC, and Gabon. Brazza Fashion Week promotes Congolese fashion and beauty, then helps entrepreneurs who are in the shadows to show themselves to the public. The Brazza Fashion Week was the first experience of a fashion week for some designers and creators in Congo. Many relished the showcase with live music and other side attractions. We have great news. Tunacheki, Kunda Kids and Nala have partnered together to bring you Maua and the Garden of Plenty, our first African children's book for free. Nala is a money transfer app that uses the latest technology and works with local communities to make payments as hassle-free as possible. The easy-to-use app allows anyone to quickly send money from the UK to Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, Ghana, with many other African countries and currencies coming soon at the lowest rates available. To get a free copy of Maua and the Garden of Plenty for yourself, family or friends, download the Nala app Use the code KUNDAKIDS and make a transfer of as little as one pound. For those in the USA, you can download the app and RSVP for your free book coming next month. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, follow, share and like our video. It's the best way of supporting us. And remember, Africa is watching.